The EU Green Deal, a key package of policy initiatives to set the European Union on the path to net zero and be competitive about it. Dr. Deschamps, has the Green Deal done what it was set out to, to do? In what ways has it exceeded expectations and in what ways has it not? I think the EU Green Deal was really the roadmap for all of the mandate of this Commission five years. And if I had to rate what it has delivered, I would give it a very good mark. But it's not, it's not a done deal, it's not something which has an end date. It, in fact, the objective is to put the EU economy on the path towards uh, climate neutrality by 2050, which is the translation of the Paris Agreement uh, for the, uh, developed economies like, like the EU. And what it has achieved so far is it has set very ambitious objectives. Uh, I think that the next phase is to turn those very ambitious objectives into the reality. So it, we, we will need to go into an implementation phase. And that is going to be even more difficult than just setting the objectives. That said, the, the EU Green Deal up to now also had to face very difficult circumstances. The COVID-19, the war in Ukraine, uh, coming with all the energy supply issues associated with it. So I think that the EU Green Deal has delivered even more than expected in the uh, chapters which are linked to energy security, but probably less than expected in the other chapters like the agricultural sector, food, what we eat and all these things. But to really judge it, we will need to see how it delivers by 2030 and even by 2050. I know it sounds very long term, but we cannot really judge it now. Up to now, it's gone OK especially in the chapters associated with energy supply because of the war in Ukraine, in short. Interesting that you brought up the war in Ukraine and considering the broader geopolitical landscape that we currently have and all of these uh, initiatives from across the world to address climate change, how has the Green Deal set up the European Union in terms of its competitiveness? I think that competitiveness was at the core of the Green Deal from the start in many, many different ways. But however, with the shock coming from the war in Ukraine and the energy supply crisis and the gas prices and all of those things, there has been a reorientation of the Green Deal towards even more competitiveness issues. And the Commission has prob probably progressively redirected the Green Deal towards becoming more something like an industrial um, strategy instrument through the Net Zero Industry Act, which is not only a reaction to the US Inflation Reduction Act and the Chinese strategy and all the strategies of all the other uh, big regions of the world. So there has been that change. It's not over. It will be part of the implementation of the EU Green Deal objectives. And it is difficult because when you talk industry competitiveness, you realize that all the member states in the EU are naturally defending the competitiveness of their own national local industries. So the, uh, the challenge is really to be more coordinated at the European level and address policy, uh, policies for, for an industrial strategy in a coordinated manner rather than in the dispersed patchwork kind of, uh, of approach. With the EU's elections coming up, what do you think will be the best and worst case scenarios? I think that the best case scenario is relatively easy to define. It's a scenario where we would keep the level of ambition of the EU Green Deal as it's been defined. We would even increase it, possibly, if there is a global realization by the other regions of the world that the decarbonization is key in improving the competitiveness of the industry in a Paris compatible world. So that's uh, an easy task. Uh, and uh, it would need to be complemented now by implementing the EU Green Deal objectives which have been set up so far. That's the best case. The worst case is more difficult to define. It's a lot more worrying. It's a case where we would see uh, coming more populistic votes throughout the EU member states, left and right, several of them in many different ways. But then this could be coupled with the lowering of the ambition level of the EU Green Deal. Uh, the implementation phase would be put in great difficulties. Uh, the reaction of the other regions of the world would be also negative, for instance, towards our carbon border adjustment measure. So there is a, a possible coalescence of 
negative factors around the EU elections, which would put us off, put us off course of uh, a path towards a, a Paris compatible world 20, 2050. And uh, this is this is really worrying. Mm. And what needs what we need to see in order to try to avoid it is that in the EU Green Deal there must be something for everyone and it must be seen by the people in all the member states as a socially just transition. If not, uh, we are at risk of uh, heading towards the uh, worst case scenario. Well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insights. Very welcome. For the latest insights and updates into the energy transition, make sure to join the Inlet community.